Good morning guys on Frequented World and I just wanted to show you the forest this morning. Absolutely beautiful and mysterious looking this morning. So I want to take a walk and give you guys a channel update, a Bigfoot series update and uh, mostly just to show you the beautiful forest today. Absolutely amazing today. Just a bit of snow clinging in all the trees still coming down and beautiful. We take it for granted living up here in this environment, but not everybody gets to see the snow and today it is gorgeous. First update is we have no snow machine. So 128 kilometers on the machine and it's in the shop. So that's not a good update, but hopefully they've had it for a week and I haven't heard anything. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. We've got a bearing going in the track drive, so that's got to be replaced. And the motor shake. Since the day I picked that machine up, it shakes violently and the motor is not mounted properly in there. So I never should have took the machine. I told the guy in the shop I didn't like it doing that and I still took it. It's under warranty. We'll see what happens. I've been told bad things. We'll see. I was also told we have an issue where it won't start. Anything below minus five, the fuel injection doesn't seem to be working properly. So I'm not super happy, $10,000 purchase. Um, I'm not gonna harp on it, let's move on. But no snow machine for now, we're gonna be walking. But that's fine, I like walking. The recording that we're getting from the camcorder, they're not great. And when I turn the sound up, it's just to show you guys, I'm not crazy, that there is something on the camera, but we can't really ID what they are. And the, the sounds always sound different on the recording versus what my ears are hearing. Um, that whistle that was on here didn't sound like what I heard with my ears. It's just to prove that, hey, he did hear something, he's not crazy. That's why I amplify the sound and put it on here. On that note, I also want to talk about a parabolic dish. I'm starting to look and I think that's a fantastic idea. I have a really good sound recorder that you can plug an external mic into and that would be perfect for a parabolic dish. We'll maybe just go out and start sitting in the swamp and just recording sounds. I'd like to go out a little further, a little further away from civilization, get as clean of recordings late at night as we can, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning with the least amount of humans out there possible. And we, we're gonna travel too. We're not gonna do everything back here in the swamp. The incidents that have been happening back here, I can't explain, but I don't think there's a Bigfoot in my backyard here. I don't see any tracks, I don't see any physical sign of that, but something's going on. I'll be the first guy to say, hey, something crazy is going on there. We're gonna keep investigating here. But in terms of what I'm looking for, and that's an actual physical beast out in the woods, I don't think it lives back here. There's no physical evidence for that so far on this channel. There are some other weird things which I've shown you guys and I can't explain them, but I don't think it's Bigfoot. That being said, this is the perfect morning with the fresh snow to do a hike around the 90 acre trail look for tracks and any sign and uh, do a little discussion. So we're gonna do that, we're not giving up. I'm all about physical evidence. That's what we're after on this channel. I do throw in user stories and things like that, but um, I'm after proof and I'm after evidence and that's the mainstay of this series. So let's take a walk. Fortunately or unfortunately, I'm gonna have to bring the dog today. I've been working two jobs all week and he's been in his cage, so he needs to get out. So I had a couple of viewers mention about breaking off a trail that goes into that back right corner um, where we heard all the noise and stuff. Guys, I know it's hard to show on the video, but that is exactly where my trail goes. My house is over here and we're in, heading right into that back right corner. The trail goes on a 45 degree for 500 yards right through that area where we keep hearing things. And then it kind of goes back further uh, off to my right here, which is way back into the deep woods. And there's, like I say, probably eight to 10 kilometers before we get to the next road that crosses there. And that's uh, a road that only has a municipal uh, water uh, plant on it. So a settling plant, a sewage plant, and some other buildings and things there. And then there's a hiking trail at the end of that. So nothing really. And we're heading south, right? So um, 
I always say that even though I live here in the north, I'm investigating here behind my place to the south. I've showed you guys the swamp many times. There's tons of room to the south, but when we go north, um, it's crazy. There are literally thousands of kilometers north of here where you wouldn't hit a settlement. If you just zigzag in the proper way, you wouldn't hit a settlement. You'll cross highways and roads and things, but no settlements and then you know next thing you know you'd be up in the arctic you know it might take you a month to get there but there's nothing up here guys this is prime area to do the research we do and tons of sightings here too which i've gone over before on the channel so just as good a chance here as any So last week the wife and I went for a walk through the trail here and I saw a coyote take off running. Coyote or a wolf, I'm pretty sure it was a coyote. And we could just see it, you know, 60, 70 yards out running through the trees and the dog was with us. He didn't notice it until I stopped and pointed it out to my wife and then he was gone. And she said the same thing happened with this great gray owl. The owl actually came in, swooped down to the ground, uh, grabbed some prey and she said the dog didn't notice it until she turned and looked at it, got her phone out and started talking to the dog saying, hey look, an owl, and then the owl flew back up into a tree. And uh, so I wonder about him. I think he's more interested in sticks and stuff. I don't know. That's not a stick, that's half a tree. What are you gonna do with that? And sadly, I think he eats half of this stuff. He actually swallows it. You're not taking that home. Which then kind of leads me to the conclusion that the more I can leave him at home, the better, because he makes a lot of noise. And I like to sneak up on stuff and just stand here quietly and listen, especially if we're trying to do uh, sound recordings. We're going to leave him at home a little more, I guess. But, I mean, hey, all of that being said, he is great company, and, you know, having a four-legged partner with you out in the bush can take the edge off. I also have to remind myself to look up on these walks. These are some pretty big pines. You know, you never know what you'll see up there. Also a new flashlight update. I don't know if I mentioned to you guys, but uh, in the last video my brother and I did where he had the infrared five watt flashlight, he said it wasn't working properly. We did get some footage of that. I think there's something wrong with that flashlight at this point. Um, we had it fail in the one video, which drained battery, I can't explain. But in the next video, it would only come on half power. So it would be full, and then the next time you turn it on, it would only be half. So to me, I think there's something wrong with that flashlight, and I've ordered a new one. I ordered the 10 watt. This thing should be bright. I don't know when it's gonna get here, probably coming from China, but it should be twice as bright as the one we've been using so far. That way we'll have a spare. If one of them goes wonky, we don't have to turn on another flashlight. We can stay in infrared mode. I'll have two of them. So I like to, you know, stay out here as much as I can incognito. That's the whole plan, right? See them, but don't be seen if we can. Trail cams have been out here uh, for a couple weeks now, and so far all I've gotten are deer and fox. Nothing unusual on there.
This might be a good day to put the drone up. It's just absolutely beautiful up there. So much snow in the trees. I think if I can get home in time here before it starts melting, we'll throw the drone up and get, get out into the far swamp. Maybe get some shots of the swamp. Okay, we're in emergency mode now. I lost the drone. I hit the edge of the swamp, lost signal, couldn't control it, couldn't return home. I ran three quarters of a mile through the bush here to see if I could manually spot the thing. No go, I just get to the edge of the swamp and I hear the drone, this starts beeping and the drone goes over top of me, whew, shooting back towards the house. I don't know, that sucker better be able to land itself. The only problem is where I took off on my deck was on a tiny little table right beside the house. I can just envision that I'm gonna get back and there's gonna be pieces of plastic siding and drone everywhere. It has run into the house before. I can't control it, there's zero, nothing I can do with this. I got half a mile to run back here. Whew, see you there. So now after, I don't know, 18 minutes, I'm still a quarter mile from the house. I'm back on my 90 acre trail right now. And I think there's 0% chance that even if the drone was smart enough to hover there and wait for me, it would have ran out of battery by now, so it's probably tried an emergency landing. Hopefully it was right on my deck or in my backyard. Well, there's the house and I don't hear any hovering drone. It's been way too long. Oh man, what am I gonna find when I get up here? This is where I took off from. And there's no drone. No idea what I'm gonna do now, guys. Drone is gone. No idea where. I gotta figure out how to track this thing. I just jumped on the computer in panic mode thinking how do I track this thing and I looked out the window and here's what I saw. Atta girl, she found it! It was in the backyard somewhere. I told her, take a look while I go jump on the computer. She said it looked like it was landed in the snow. It was deep. So maybe it didn't crash land. I'll have to check it out. So to me it looks like it's made a safe landing because the gimbal is packed with snow but it's not broken. So. Oh, we still have a drone, guys. We still have a drone. Well, thanks a lot, Kaylee. I really appreciate that. That's a $1,000 save. Uh, we'll check the footage and see if it actually landed or crash landed, and then I'll inspect the damage from there. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. I don't, won't be flying the drone in crappy weather like that anymore.